Hello and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. Apologies in advance if my cats make a bunch of noise in the background because uh, they think that I'm talking to them and uh, there's nothing much that I can do about it. But in any case, we have a really spicy build for you today. And by spicy, I mean pretty exploitive of the game's mechanics. But it has a really cool name and that is the Chill Pill. The original idea is by Blazing Falcon on the Oxygen Not Included forums. I've gone ahead and made some optimizations for it, but uh, we are going to show off his original build and then my version of the build uh, and show you how it works. This is a way of cooling down your base using vitamin chews. Yes, you heard me correctly, vitamin chews. And the basic principle is this. Whenever you put something into a refrigerator, its temperature is reverted to 20 degrees Celsius. So here we have some vitamin chews that have been sitting in here for variable periods of time. And we are about to open this door and load them up into a conveyor loader. And this conveyor loader is going to put them on a conveyor rail that is going to snake around through this system, uh, let them exchange heat with these surroundings, and then put them back into these refrigerators and revert their temperature back to 20 degrees Celsius and then repeat this process. Uh, it's a lot of automation, but nothing really that complicated. Basically, the, the core of the build is the automation once you understand the basic idea. Um, but, and I'll go over that in a bit, but let's go ahead and just watch this in action. So this door is going to open up, and then we're going to start loading vitamin chews into this system. Now, this could be really anything. Um, vitamin chews are simply one of the easier things to make because they only require coal and not that much of it. Uh, but anything that you can make from the apothecary is going to work here. And basically, we have set this conveyor receptacle to a priority of four, uh, these refrigerators all to a priority of five, and this conveyor loader to a priority of six. That way, the system always wants to move things from the conveyor receptacle to the fridges, and then from the fridges to the conveyor loader if possible. And we have it set up so that this door always closes before this conveyor shutoff uh, allows the vitamin shoes to go into this conveyor receptacle and be removed by this auto sweeper. So here we have the auto sweeper. Uh, taking things from the conveyor receptacle, putting them back in here, and then pretty soon this door is going to open and the process is going to repeat itself. If we go to shipping here, we can see all the vitamin chews kind of being loaded up into here, right? Pretty easy. Uh, if I look at the conveyor rail here, it has 20 kilograms of genetic ooze, which is the uh, the property that all of these medicines have. And genetic ooze is pretty nice because it has a specific heat capacity of 3.47 and a decent thermal conductivity of about 0.6. So it's a decent cooling material and we see that its temperature is just increasing, increasing, increasing. And then we're going to dump it into these refrigerators and it's gonna be put in at 20 degrees Celsius. Now it's still exchanging heat with these surroundings. We have this entire system submerged in petroleum. Right, so it's still going to uh, provide a little bit of uh, cold extraction while sitting in these refrigerators, but we wanna empty them out and then put them back in periodically to refresh that temperature and get things back down to 20 degrees Celsius. Also, we're gonna get more temperature exchange by spreading them out across all these tiles using the system. So that's basically the idea. Uh, really clever, really simple, and here um, he's got it where it is just barely enough to handle gold thermal aqua tuners. I put in steel uh, thermal aqua tuners just to be safe, but you could use gold in this build. Uh, these are aqua tuners running off of polluted water, uh, which is a pretty good uh, coolant for the system. And again, we have everything basically submerged in petroleum. I've gone ahead and used aluminum uh, metal in a lot of the system and steel where the overheat temperatures are relevant. Uh, so I have a little bit better conductivity than he has, uh, but also, uh, you could just widen the system by one tile if you wanted to get a little bit more, right? Because a gold thermal aqua tuner will overheat at 175. Uh, here, you know, we're just under 175, but you could expand the system out by one tile and it fit in an extra refrigerator into the system. And uh, then you would be guaranteed under that uh, 175 limit. Uh, because the, the auto sweeper will reach one more tile, right? It goes four in this direction and then four in this direction, right? There's a little bit of extra space that we could use. So pretty clever, pretty simple. Um, the automation is really where a lot of the core of the build is. And basically what we have here is a sort of timer uh, built into the system. He's kind of uh, nestled everything into this and set it up so that if you wanted to, you could power these fridges and get a little bit more cooling out of the system. Uh, powering the fridges will kick the temperature that these uh, the, the contents are put down to from 20 degrees to four degrees, right? Which would provide some extra cooling to the system. That isn't necessary though, so this automation wire doesn't have to go through here. You could route it somewhere else. Um, but basically this clock right here is going to toggle on and off 
uh, our settings for uh, whether or not this door is open and also whether or not this uh, conveyor receptacle is ready to go. So um, this is a, one of the different ways you can make a sort of timer or clock, not quite a clock because it isn't telling the time of day, that could be a little bit confusing, but this is gonna be sort of on a cycle, right? And uh, the way that he, he has it set up uh, is that he has his buffer gate set to 140 seconds. I think this is incorrect. I think I was, this is actually supposed to be 145. Uh, I might have uh, put this in incorrectly. Uh, but then this active filter is on 95 seconds. And then he has uh, just one extra little part to this, uh, which is the other filter up here. He has another filter gate up here set to five seconds. Basically anything small will do. And this is just here to make sure that this door uh, is not open at the same time that this conveyor receptacle is uh, available, right? Uh, after this conveyor shutoff. So the door closes first and then this conveyor receptacle is enabled more or less because of this conveyor shutoff. Uh, and that makes sure that nothing is transferred directly from this conveyor receptacle to the conveyor loader. Because right, the point is to take it out of the conveyor receptacle and put it into a fridge to set it to reset its temperature. Um, you don't want things to just transfer directly. So he has a little filter gate there. Um, going back to the automation, right? Uh, there's a not gate here because that's what uh, these doors accept more or less as a signal, right? Just because he wants to toggle between open and closed. Um, and this is his little filter gate here just to make sure that these things don't toggle on at the exact same time. He set it to five seconds. You could set this to one second. And you'd just be uh, fine. And then how you set these uh, properties on your timer is going to determine how much dwell time you have as it sort of sits there on the conveyor rail. Uh, versus how much sort of active moving time you have. So you can play around with this. Um, it, it's going to kind of make a difference in terms of how much power you're using for your conveyor, uh, or your auto sweepers, right? How often they are active. Um, it, it's gonna make a little bit of a difference in terms of your heat transfer stuff. But again, the way that he's got the system designed, you're just under that 175 mark for the thermal aqua tuners. And if you kind of expand it out by one tile, I think you could be well under that and use gold thermal aqua tuners for the system. So pretty nice. Uh, obviously this build does take power in the sense that the thermal aqua tuners take power. Uh, but in terms of the rest of the power requirements, this is not that much, right? 120 watts for this uh, conveyor loader, which isn't always on, right? Because he's got a fairly long dwell time in the system. These fridges don't need to be powered. He's got a door that uh, is toggled on and off every once in a while. This auto sweeper, a little bit for this conveyor shutoff. But this is a fairly minor power draw. Obviously, you're not getting power back in the sense that a steam turbine would give you power back for deleting heat. Um, but still, you're deleting a lot of heat. This is two thermal aqua tuners worth of heat. Uh, that you're reliably cooling down here. And uh, if when I show my build, we're gonna see that you can actually get a lot more efficient than that. So uh, I really like this build. I think it's really clever. I absolutely love the name of Chill Pill. And let's go ahead and show how you might go ahead and refine it. Here is sort of the thing that this is cooling down. Um, I should probably reheat this because it's already chilled itself off by uh, quite a bit. Super coolant and uh, 373, please. Just to make sure this doesn't break itself because I didn't put any sort of um, uh, automation on these thermal aqua tuners. So they would freeze this coolant in the pipes if I let this run long enough. But let's go ahead and look at my system here. Now I've taken the automation and uh, kind of broken it out over here. That way it's easier to, to see and easier to kind of toggle. You notice me having to click around a little bit to get to my automation there. It's nice in your final builds to have the automation kind of hidden in the walls and things of that sort, so it looks nice and clean. But for demonstration purposes, we're gonna show it here today. So same idea, I've got the same sort of timer uh, clock thing, only I have set this to 150 seconds. I like a nice round number because this is one fourth of a day, so this is gonna be easier for me to calculate some things. And then I set this to 80 seconds after some playing around and seeing how long it took for my uh, auto sweepers to load and unload things. 80 seconds was a good amount of time. I cut this filter gate down to one second uh, because that's really all you need. The only point of it is to make sure that you're not able to transfer directly from the conveyor receptacle to the conveyor loader. And then we made a few changes. Number one is we expanded the capacity. Uh, here, instead of having only five fridges, uh, I have in fact 13 fridges and we've increased the number of vitamin chews in the system accordingly. Instead of having 500 kilograms of vitamin chews, we have 1300 kilograms of vitamin chews. Uh, I've used two auto sweepers here because it turns out that um, they are a limiting factor in terms of how quickly you can unload this conveyor receptacle. So we've got two now. That increases the power requirements, but uh, I think this build is gonna be still pretty efficient. And then it has basically the same idea, only uh, instead of having, if I go back to the shipping over here, instead of having just this 
uh, part of things receive the cooling from the vitamin chews, uh, it makes a little bit more sense to just have a lot of your cooling go directly into where you've got your thermal aqua tuners. Uh, so if we look at the shipping in my system, I've actually designed it so that it spends most of its time down here with the thermal aqua tuners. I've in fact taken the tiles underneath these thermal aqua tuners and turned them to metal tiles, uh, which is also convenient because I need to fit heavy watt joint plates in here somewhere in this build. Um, because I don't have a way of powering my thermal aqua tuners otherwise. Uh, and so just having a little vacuumed out area under here where I have my heavy watt joint plates connect uh, is pretty uh, pretty neat. I also like the symmetry of it given that I've kind of expanded things by one that makes this an odd number of tiles. Uh, one of the things I like about his build is nice and symmetric with this number of tiles, which is probably the reason why he set it to this number of tiles instead of getting the full usage out of the auto sweeper. I've tried to maintain that. I like symmetric builds, so we've gone ahead with that. And I've basically uh, run the math on how much cooling we're getting from uh, at least this many fridges worth of genetic ooze. Uh, and I've basically got it so that these thermal aqua tuners are pretty close to their limit. I, I could potentially add a couple more fridges and maybe get one more thermal aqua tuner in here. Um, but then I would lose a lot of the symmetry, so I think this is good enough. Uh, but the basic idea is still the same. Um, only I've kind of shaved all the margins off of the system. So we're going to see that this uh, is going to be constantly loading and unloading. The, the dwell time is very short, right? That was as long as we dwelled in the system. And now we're back to loading and unloading. And there's going to be a big period of loading and unloading. And we still have vitamin chews flowing through the system this entire time, right? If I go to shipping here, so we can see things a little bit more clearly, right? This is all going, going, going. And then right as we're finishing off the last, the very last fridge, we're gonna open up this door and start loading things back in again, right? And then once these things have kind of made their course around here, pretty quickly we're going to uh, let them be unloaded off this uh, conveyor rail and back into the fridges. Uh, so we're trying to get as much efficiency out of this system as possible. We're exposing it to the hottest stuff possible, which is basically these thermal aqua tuners. Um, and we actually have, because we are uh, concentrating a lot of our cooling in this thermal aqua tuner area, we actually have a pretty big temperature difference between uh, our sort of refrigerator room and our thermal aqua tuner room. Partly that's because we have, uh, for a, a lot longer period of time, we have the refrigerators storing these vitamin chews, and so they're able to exchange a lot more heat just passively dwelling in these refrigerators. That's part of the reason why this room is around 175 and this room is around 290, 285, something like that, right? Um, so there is a pretty big temperature difference. That's also convenient, though, because the... Uh, the overheat temperature of a thermal aqua tuner is going to be 325 degrees because their, their base overheat temperature is 125 degrees, whereas the base overheat temperature of, say, a refrigerator is only 75 degrees. So when you add 200 degrees, uh, whether, or not you're using, whether you're using ceramic or steel, right, um, that's going to, right, we, we kind of want this area to be hotter as a result. Um, and we care more about the cooling in this area as a result. So I think the system works pretty well. Um, again, the timings are for the uh, buffer gate here in our in our sort of alert or, or sorry uh, not our alert our uh, um, timer system we have 150 seconds on this active buffer time uh, we have 80 seconds on this active filter time i've shaved this down to one second right because it's just a little stop to make sure these things don't happen simultaneously uh and yeah it's uh it's really that simple two con two auto sweepers obviously it takes a lot of power to power these thermal aqua tuners I'm using a whole array of hydrogen generators in order to accomplish that. Um, but that's not really something you're going to be able to avoid in a lot of builds anyways. Right? You're going to have to power these thermal opportunities to concentrate the heat somewhere to be deleted. Um, the actual system itself, the active cooling system, still doesn't require very much in the way of power, right? It's an extra auto sweeper, and we're using these conveyor loaders and auto sweepers a little bit more often. Uh, but other than that, still very efficient in terms of power. And uh, yeah, that's the chill pill. Really, really neat build. Uh, again, pretty highly <laughs> exploitive of the game's mechanics. I don't think this is an intended thing that the uh, temperature of these vitamin chews will reset every time they are put into a, a, an off refrigerator. Uh, perhaps it's the case that if we put things into a, an on refrigerator um, that there's going to be some sort of uh, heat deletion process akin to the ice machine. Um, but I'm pretty sure this isn't really what Clay wants us to do. Uh, but it is highly effective. I mean, look at this. Uh, just with this system here, cooling down six thermal aqua tuners, 
I mean, move aside steam turbines. This is this is fantastic. Here's my sort of heat exchanger type system. This could be whatever, right? You don't need any sort of super coolant or anything. But these radiant pipes would be uh, exchanging heat with you know something else going through here. And uh, yeah, you probably would want to put some sort of automation to make sure that these thermal aqua tuners aren't outputting this polluted water at uh, you know below negative 20 degrees and freeze your pipes and break them. Um, and that would make the build a little bit more ugly. So maybe this build is a little bit of a lie in that sense because uh, this room is gonna have to be a little bit more complicated. But at the same time, making this uh, thermal aqua tuner room larger also gives you more opportunity to snake more of this uh, conveyor rail through this system uh, that will allow you to direct your cooling more efficiently. So making this room larger to accommodate a little bit of automation and make sure that these thermal aqua tuners have the appropriate sort of safety mechanisms installed um, also would improve the efficiency of the system. Uh, the steady state temperature for this build uh, looks to be around 282, so we still have a little bit of room to go. Again, you probably could fit in like one more thermal aqua tuner if you manage to squeeze in just a couple extra fridges into this area over here, like by moving this auto sweeper uh, maybe up one and, and having some more fridges here, right? Having like an auto sweeper that had specific access to some things. There's probably some geometry of this would be a little bit more efficient. Um, right in terms of cramming more refrigerators into the system. And you would need to then play around with these timings a little bit more to make sure that you had enough time to load and unload all this stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is just really neat, um, really exploitive, but really neat. And uh, again, the name, Chill Pill, oh, just perfect. I, 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 I don't mind names like the Spom, right? But uh, none of them really, like, they're not poetic, right? The Chill Pill... Using, using vitamin shoes to, to cool down your base is just so interesting. All right, that's it for this episode. Uh, I'll catch you guys next time and uh, more spicy builds to come in the future, I think. Uh, that's it. I'll catch you guys next time.